Welcome back to the channel. This is part four of the Fishing Tackle 101 series. Last time we talked about colors and we really boiled it down to very, very, very simple. If it's light uh, stained water, so the water's clear, uh, you can see your lure down, you know, four, five, six feet. You want to go with a natural looking color because the fish can see it well. So you want it to look like the kind of food that they normally eat. So whether that's crawfish or whether that's a bluegill or whether that's a sun perch, shad, whatever the case, a frog, whatever they're eating, you want it to look as natural as possible because they can get a pretty good look at it. If the water is really stained, you know, you're welcome to start out with the natural looking colors, but if they're not working, you might want to go with a black, a black and blue, something that really silhouettes well and has a dark shadow that they can pick up easily in the darker water. Same with nighttime fishing or fishing around dusk. Um, or like a bright chartreuse color. You know, something that's really bright that's going to stand out um, where they can see it in the stained water. So water clarity is what determines the color that you should use, whether it's natural or whether it's something trying to pop and get the attention of the bass. Um, or whatever fish that you're going after. But water clarity can also be helped or hindered by sunlight or lack of sunlight. So, you know, if, if you just had a rain and it washed in a lot of mud, then the water's obviously gonna be dirtier. Uh, in a fast moving stream, the water's gonna be clearer. So, but just the clarity of the water itself is not the only factor. Even on a little bit stained water, not really super muddy, but even a little bit stained water, if, if it's a bright sunny day, that's adding some clarity to that water, no matter what level of clarity it is to begin with. So if you have sunlight, that can also affect the type of lures that you want to use. For instance, <clears throat> this white spinnerbait here has silver blades on it. The blades obviously are going to reflect off the sun. This one here is a white spinnerbait with a little bit of chartreuse in it um, and one silver and one gold blade. Now gold reflects sun better. It reflects more light. So just based on what I've been telling you, if the water's a little bit darker, you'd rather go with this. Got a little bit of an amplifier here, which we're gonna talk about in a second. And these are obviously amplifiers too. All spinners are amplifiers. The blades themselves are amplifiers. You know, if it's, here's a bluegill pattern or color. And obviously if, you know, if it's not shad, but it's more bluegill in your area, then go with the bluegill color. It is a darker color, kind of has some green pumpkin in it. So it's still natural. Notice it's got a gold and a silver blade. Now, if the water clarity is not good, and at the same time, there's no sunlight, you know, a gold or a silver blade is not going to do you much luck. In that case, you might want to go with a chartreuse or a dark black color with painted blades. Now, these have been through a lot. I've caught several fish with this one. So the paint is coming off. It looks pretty nasty. And it is. But originally, these were painted solid chartreuse. So, you know, th this particular amplifier, if it were gold or silver, you're not going to get any reflection off the sunlight if it's a cloudy day and there is no sun. So in that case, you just want to go with as much eye popping bright colors as possible. So that color conversation takes us into amplifiers and we talked about amplifier right there when it comes to color and when it also comes to spinner blades. But let me recap what, it, what I'm talking about when I say an amplifier. All we're talking about is amplifying some sense to the fish, whether it's sight, sound, or taste. So for instance, you have, have right here a Berkeley Power Grub, three inch size. This has an amplifier built into it because it has a strong scent. And almost all your soft plastics, plastics I'm sorry, is gonna have salt in it as well. So the fish bites on, they should get a salty taste, but it has a very strong scent. It actually stinks, but the fish like it. So this has amplifiers built in. There are a lot of just 
standard grubs that you could buy, soft plastic grubs that would not be as impregnated with the salt, have as much flavor, or wouldn't have any kind of um, scent at all. So this would be a little bit of a step up as far as amplifier goes. However, it's still a pumpkin color, which is a natural color. It looks like kind of like a little crawdad or something. I've used this exact thing a lot and caught a lot of fish. Um, goggle, I really like them. Uh, green sunfish and smallmouth bass, I love them. But now I could, if I wanted to, get some of that chartreuse dye and I could dip the tail in the chartreuse dye and add a little bit of color to that tail if I wasn't getting any bites. Let me show you that. Okay. So this is not a Berkeley Power Grub. This is a Bass Pro Tournament Series Triple Ripple Grub. But notice it has the chartreuse tail. So it's a black grub with a chartreuse tail. But like I said, if you dipped that, you know, you could get that tail color on that grub. So all that's going to do is brighten it up. Now, if it's a clear day and the sun's out and you're using this grub on a little jig head, probably an eighth ounce, maybe a sixteenth ounce, and you're catching fish, you don't need an amplifier. So amplifiers really are only useful if they're, if your normal bait is just not you know, producing well. So you could dip the tail in chartreuse if you wanted to. You can also get certain scents that come in a bottle. You can dip your bait in it to give it a scent, whatever the case. Now, generally speaking, I would rig every soft plastic. I actually got, got one right here. I would rig up a Berkeley Power grub on a lead head, just like that. This particular one has a uh, red hook. It's a sixteenth ounce. So you could go with an eighth ounce. Um, and that is how I rig these up. Now, if you're throwing this out there, you're letting it sit, it's not working, you're throwing it out there and just reeling it in. I've caught a ton of fish doing that. Just not working, you could add a spinner to this, okay? So this basically turns into a spinner bait. You could do the same thing with any grub. Honestly, you could do the same thing with anything adding that little spinner to it, uh, getting that little bit of reflection is just going to make this more enticing. So, you know, you start with this, maybe you want to add this, maybe you want to change colors, maybe you want to add the spinner to this. If the sun is out, maybe you want to add a gold spinner to that triple ripple grub. But the whole purpose of amplifiers is you just keep adding some type of enticement to the built-in uh, presentation of that lure to entice the fish and get their senses spiked. So that's that's all we're talking about today is amplifiers. Okay, so to give you another example, let's go to top water. Now, say that you're you've decided you're going to use a popper, top water popper today, and you the water clarity is pretty clear and you decide that this color would be the best for you. This kind of a pearl bone color. Uh, it does have a little bit of kind of a fiber optic metal flake type stuff in the tail. That is sort of an amplifier. Uh, but basically it's a pretty tame color. It has a little bit of an orange cup in the front. It does have a little red paint on the gills, but basically this looks like a little fish on top water. Okay, that very well could do it. But maybe, it's getting closer to nighttime where the water is just darker. You might want to go with a black uh, popper here or a chugger as they're called. That might be the right color to go. But ba And this has more, I don't know if you can tell that, but way more uh, brightness and all that stuff to the tail. So it just is more enticing. Okay. You know, and basically if you think you're going to be fishing a frog type of an imitation, you might want to go with that. I think that might technically be a baby bass look, but to me it looks kind of like a frog color, so that might be good for you. But now let's look at this popper right here. Now this is a rare instance where I have a very expensive lure. This, this popper costs like 20 bucks. It's a Binksy, and I forgot the. It's a Jack All Binksy popper. Now, 
this whole point of this series is to tell you that you don't need to buy lures like this and you don't. There's no doubt about that. You could buy this popper here, this Rebel Pop R for like $4 or whatever the case and it's probably going to get you're going to get 90% of the results out of it. So you don't need to go crazy on lures. Why did I buy this? I just wanted it. I just really wanted it. But let me show you how cool this is. So speaking of amplifiers, okay, um, actually most of these poppers have little balls inside. This particular one does as well. If that was loud, I apologize. So inside this body, there's little balls that move around. So as I pop it, not only does it cup the water and make a splash on top water, but it also, that noise will vibrate through the water. So it's got an amplifier in inside based on sound. Um, <clears throat> then it has this little underspin here, this little spinner, okay? That's obviously gonna catch some light. And so there's a visual thing, a visual amplifier, as well as some, you know, a bit of glitter and fiber optic color in that little, um, treble hooked trailer it also has a propeller so this kind of works like a prop bait slash top water so you know there's there's two different theories you have I would consider this like the extreme when it comes to um, you know a bait being amplified and all kinds of extra features on it to try and get the fish's attention but uh, it's a green and black by the way which to me in a little bit of goldish in the bottom it just kind of looks to me like a like a frog then you got a real basic thing here with not a lot of amplification really tame colors it's not really it's not trying to um really get the fish's attention it's just trying to look natural like a little bait fish on top of the water so you know you could go out there and think well i'm gonna start with the natural and I'm going to fish it and if it don't work then I'll maybe get a lure that's got a little bit more pop to it a little bit more um, pizzazz to it and try to go that way which I think is a very sound logical way of going about it why wouldn't why would you not want to start with the most natural presentation sounds very logical to me but the other way is not wrong either. You might say, no, I'm always going to start with the uh, Jack All Binksy. I'm always going to use this as my go-to popper. It's got all kinds of amplifiers on it, all kinds of things. You know, the sight and the sound is just going to draw fish's attention. If this is too much, then I'll back it off and we get a more pr uh, natural presentation. So either one of those methods work, and there's really no right or wrong answer to it. I've got a... Super Spook Junior, and it's kind of a blue and a silver color. Um, it, it is kind of hollow. You can actually both of these are kind of hollow. You can see through them. So a little bit of sunlight on top. It it'll probably work pretty good. Uh, this looks like a bait fish on top. Let's say that maybe there's a lot of current moving on a river, or there's just maybe not as much. The water's just not as clear. Maybe there's not as much sunlight. You might want to get a little bit of chartreuse, okay, to go with that. Uh, but you could always add something to your lure to make it more enticing. That's all amplifiers are. Okay, let me talk just a minute about jig heads. <clears throat> this right here is the foundation of all the fishing that I do, okay? That right there. Everything is based off of this. You know, back in the day, uh, most of the time you would have a split shot sinker down your line so often. I hate doing that. Uh, a lot of people that use Texas rig will hook their rig weedless with a wide gap hook and then have a sliding bullet style sinker on the line. I hate doing that. It's just to me, it's just an extra step. Why not have your weight and your hook together? Okay. I just don't see a purpose. And you, by, by the way, you can get that head in any shape you want to do anything that you want it to do. Um, unless you're trying to fish weightless, this is the way to go. I basically fish all soft plastics off this, okay? So I'm gonna ask you something. What's the difference between this right here and this swim jig here? 
football jig. Or maybe this spinnerbait. Or maybe this buzzbait. What's the difference? Not a whole lot. They all have basically a jig head. They got the weight and the hook. Okay? That's all it is. Everything else is amplifiers. Okay? Here is a... This is just a ball head, 8th ounce jig head. Here's a football style 8th ounce jig head with a Z-Man craw on there. That right there's a fish catcher. You don't need anything other than that. Now, a football head jig, of course, is for fishing on the bottom. It's shaped like a football, so it doesn't go one way or the other and get hooked on something and you get caught up so it or hung up. So it tries to stay upright for you. So this right here is enough. You don't need anything else to catch fish. You know, if, if you got a lot of fish that are feeding on, on crawfish and you fish this on the bottom, probably going to do great. You could put that same lure or a different, like a net bait pack of craw or something on that and fish it like a swim bait, catch a lot of fish. I've done it many, many times. Okay. Or you could use a grub. You can even put a worm on a jig head. Of course you can. You th some people think of shaky head worms, but in all honesty, you can put any worm you want to on a jig head. Now this particular one is a long shank, which I like. But you can get as big of a jig head as you possibly want to get. That's all that this is. Is just a bigger jig head and a bigger hook. That's all this is. Okay, that's all the the swim bait is. Sorry, is a bigger jig head and a bigger hook. Now, the thing about a bass jig, whether it's a football jig or whether it's a swim jig or any of the other ones, they're just bigger, better, and, and more stuff to them. They just have a lot of amplifiers to them. First of all, in my opinion, a skirt is an amplifier. Now, you can fish these without a trailer. Okay, this has a crawdad trailer on it. You can fish it without a trailer. They're, they're made to pull out of the package and just fish them. And the skirt is made to look like the body of a creature, whether it's a fish, whether it's a, a crawdad, doesn't matter. But to me, you might as well put a soft plastic on there. It's just going to look better. Um, but any time that you put a skirt with the soft plastic, it just looks bigger. And it's more amplified because there's so much more color detail in the skirt. A lot of at times will have metal flake, but they'll always have more detail and they'll pulsate in, uh, in, in the water. They're just going to look more natural. They're going to give a bigger presentation. Okay, this particular jig head is painted, so it matches the color of the, of the skirt. It's weedless, so and you, you could get this exact thing in a weedless version, but that's what a bass jig is. It's weedless, so you know it's going to keep things from getting onto your hook. And then it, you know, it literally is made with the spot for the rubber band part of the skirt to, to go on. It also, you can see that, but it has a little keeper on there. So it's meant to hold your soft plastic on better. So all a bass jig is, is this with a bunch of added features. Same thing here. You have a literal spot to put the um, skirt on there. Now this particular one has an amplifier, which well, not really an amplifier, but an added feature, which is a trailer hook. So a fish are, you know, if this thing is coming by here and a fish is trying to get it, but they're not really hungry. They're not engulfing the whole thing. They might just grab this hook here and get caught. But you could take that off and you could put, um, grab one here. But you, this is a buzz bait, but you could put a soft plastic on it. Okay. So the spinner bait is just a jig head with spinners on it. It's just this. That's all it is. It's just bigger, fancier, nicer. Um, <clears throat> a buzz bait's the same thing. The amplifier is this buzz bait. This is more of a sound and visual thing. It's it's not really going. Even though it's gold, I don't think it's really going for the flash of the um, the sun. It's more just that churning sound, and that churning action of of the water. But these are you know literally going for the reflection of the sun. 
So everything is based off of that, in my opinion. Everything else is just amplifiers, okay? Now, you have actual big swim baits that look like the, si the shape of a fish, or you've got, you know, crank baits, and that's a that's a different story. It's it's not based off of the jig head, but almost everything I fish is based off that, just with amplifiers added to it. Now on a um, crankbait, it's the same philosophy. It's just a hard bait. You just the hard bait is just totally different thought process. But this looks like a shad, so it's a shad wrap. It just dives down. But you know, you could get this happens to be um, a square bill crankbait, but it, it's called it's in a sexy shad color has that little bit of chartreuse just an amplifier now this is a rapala um dive to it's not a shad wrap it's going to dive to a certain depth but see it's got all that chartreuse and all that it's just a specialized thing so it doesn't matter what you're talking about or what type of lure it is start with what's natural and if you need to add amplifiers to it go ahead or if you want to you know, just start with all the amplifiers already on there, then that's fine too. Just back it off if it's not working. But just understand that the fishing lures are not complicated. That's all that they boil down to is just getting a lure that looks natural. And then if it's not working, get some stuff to amplify it. So hopefully that's been interesting to you. Uh, we'll continue the series next time. But for now, uh, have a good day and take care.